and welcome to another very special episode of our series Beating All Odds. In this series, we are honoring leaders who despite so many challenges thrown at us by COVID-19 are standing tall. The leader I have today is indeed a special one. He is a media maven, a creative thinker, a trendsetter and the most cheerful leader media and entertainment industry has ever had. A 10 minute conversation with him and the life suddenly looks very good. So in these times of despair and anxiety, he's someone you must listen to. Please welcome Mr. Raj Nayak, Founder and Managing Director of House of Cheers. Welcome to the show, Mr. Nayak. Yes, I can hear you and thank you so much, Nazia. Okay, I mean, that was a too fabulous an introduction. I mean, you made me cheerful just by the introduction. I'm feeling on top of the world. Uh, but uh, you, thank you are you a very kind man. And, uh, really nice of you. <laughs> So, uh, you know, uh, these are actually very difficult times for the industry. Uh, you know it better than me. Every uh, The business has come to a halt. What is, how will this crisis change broader dynamics of our entertainment industry? I think we, uh, it, there is going to be a change. If we think that the future is going to be the same, I don't think so. At least not the near future. The long-term future, I don't know. And so I don't profess to know something that I don't know. But, uh, but the long-term, it will have its psycho it, it will leave a psychological impact on everybody's mind, you know, uh, uh, in some way or the other. And if you're speaking about our industry in particular, the advertising and marketing industry, if you're speaking about the entertainment industry, uh, you've seen today a new movie uh, is going directly on uh, Amazon. Uh, you know, uh, I forget the name of the movie. Uh, gulab something you know and uh, I think the dynamics of the business is going to change uh, I was reading today's uh, I think either you posted it or some other uh, publication posted it saying that broadcasters are already asking production houses to cut costs uh, I saw an interview with uh, Uday Shankar where he mentioned that uh, you know, I just need to find people who have access to mobile phones. So, so I think the whole thing is going to change because uh, advertisers have suddenly realized one of the things is, "Are you going to make film so fast? And the work is going on. So, why am I going to Switzerland? Why am I going to shoot? Why am I going to make that much money? Why am I going to spend that much money? Cash is a big problem today, and because of which I think uh, immediately people will be a little averse to opening their purse strings. They'll be a little uh, uh, they'll be a little tight-fisted, I would say. Uh, having said that, uh, the entertainment industry, content consumption is going to go up. It's gone up tremendously. But at the same time, the economics of it, the dynamics of it in terms of monetization is a challenge. So I know some broadcasters who mentioned to some production houses who've been in touch with me, saying that we don't have commission. So, because so it's a chicken and egg situation. Uh, I'm very optimistic. I'm a very eternal optimist by heart. Uh, so I would like to believe that things will come back to some kind of a normal, uh, but it will take time. It ain't, it ain't going to be in a hurry. Uh, Do you think smaller production houses will gain from this situation? Because they, they are those... Time, somebody who has... One of the things this... Uh, this COVID has done, it's even made people like me, who's a tech dinosaur, tech savvy. I mean, in, in the sense, I'm learning something every day. You know, uh, this show that I, I, I put up, I mean, the live chat, I wouldn't call it a show, a live chat that I started is, uh, is something that uh, I did it all on my own. You know, I mean, I'm a guy who doesn't, didn't know how to actually even put together present a PPT on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, uh, on a computer. And I know grandparents and parents and everybody are now, you know, getting on their mobile phone, doing FaceTime, doing Zoom calls, playing Ludo King with one another and all kinds of things. So I think people who are digitally savvy, people who are able to produce stuff at a economical cost, great quality, I think they have a Huge future, huge, huge future. And uh, one of the things I was thinking in my mind is, I don't have the skill set, but how can I leverage 
a lot of people having the skill sets with the skill set that I have with my relationship with all the brand managers or marketing directors and companies. I've just been thinking in my head because everybody needs a bridge, you know, and there are lots of people. I was speaking to one of the marketing head of a broadcasting company yesterday and she told me, she said, somebody reached out to her and said, I made this film. Would you like to look at it? And uh, she bought it for 50,000 rupees and they commissioned a film to an agency for four and a half lakh rupees. And she said that was crap. And I got somebody who reached out to me, offering me a film. We just put our logo on it. We branded it and we put it out for 50,000 rupees. I think that kind of opportunity for uh, masters, you know, people who are really talented. And talented and individuals, you know, sitting at home, they can turn out stuff. And if they, if they have the right bridge to be able to uh, find the right uh, buyer, I think uh, there's a huge opportunity out there. So I, in fact, I wanted to understand from you because you have also recently ventured into a, a new company, which also was supposed to do get into production, right? So what kind of content will you look into now? <laughs> I see, I started with something when I quit my job, you know, I, 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 I quit my job without anything in hand. I didn't uh, think what I'm going to do. And, but that's me. That's, that's my nature. You know, I'm impulsive, uh, even at my business or people who know me will tell you, Raj makes decisions like this. So I've quit my jobs also many times like this, which is a good thing and a bad thing, but, uh, but somehow it's worked for me. Uh, so, so I'm blessed that way. Uh, so when I quit, I started House of Cheer with a specific intent of doing something in the business of happiness. And I actually built something. Uh, it is still built, so it's not going to go waste. Only thing is I need to probably uh, redesign, resign it and probably the timing for me may not be the right time to launch. I was trying to launch it on my mother's birthday on 22nd of March, but then everything has gone for a sixer now. Uh, in content, I had strategically taken a decision that I will go into content slowly, but that because I didn't want to get into it. I didn't want to be a production house because that's not my skill set. I don't have that skill set at all. But I, I, I wanted to be a curator of good content and I wanted to create a studio model where I would, uh, you know, uh, outsource the uh, uh, line production and take some good projects to some great big OTT platforms. That was the thought, but I had put it on hold because I was focusing on something else. And content but, business, you know, it's... Uh, sorry. Complete, complete, complete. Yes, sir. Go on, I mean, complete your sentence. Uh, I said content business, there's a lot of gestation period. It's, yeah, so content business, there's a lot of gestation period. It just doesn't happen overnight. And so I was very clear that I wanted to have some business which gave me a stable cash flow on a regular basis. Then I would focus on content and that would be, and I, did, I was not interested in doing too many things, doing once one show at a time or things like that. Coming back to the happiness product, uh, which you were supposed to launch last month. I mean, I feel you were pretty ahead of time because this year, uh, there's so much anxiety. There's, these are such gloomy times that everyone would need some kind of happiness product. Do you agree with me? I totally agree with you. My, my only challenge is going to be lots of companies who will want my product may not, the money, may not want to spend that money. So, so again, I'll, I'll have to find a way of uh, finding the balance between uh, and also need to redesign the product a little bit. And I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So the way I look at it is in every adversity, there's an opportunity. Uh, I'm a firm believer that every cloud has a silver lining. I come from that school of thought. So, so I'm looking at it. So I'm not uh, saying that things won't happen. Maybe I may just launch anything two months from now, or I may wait for another six months to launch. Uh, we are not in any big hurry. I'm here to stay. Also, uh, in these difficult times, how are you keeping yourself motivated and how are you keeping your team motivated? Uh, I don't have a very large team. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. You do have a but, team. Yeah, I do have a team. And uh, I have a very large team outside of who are not working with me. All my ex-colleagues or my people who I've worked in different organizations. So they keep me entertained. They keep giving me stuff, what's happening and what's not happening and things like that. I think they also call me to uh, 
pep themselves up. So it's mutual, you know, they pep me up and they pep themselves up. So, so I'm getting a lot of feedback. I'm connected with a lot of people I was not connected with uh, for many years. I at least stretch some people uh, whom I have not been in touch for many years. But other than that, I've been busy. I've been busy doing, in fact, it's, it's, it's funny that uh, I'm more busy now doing nothing. You know, that when I sit and think, I'm like, what have I been busy about? But time has just flown by, you know, uh, because uh, there's no demarcation between your home and office, right? You left home around 9 o'clock or 9.15 in the morning. You reached office by 9.30, 9.45 because my office is close by. But now that is not there. So, so there's no demarcation between personal and professional. It's 24 hours. So, so I really, uh, and it can consume you. I'm sure you are more tired. I can with conviction tell you, even though I don't know much about you, you are working even harder than what you used to work. Okay, going to office. And, but that's a reality for everybody. That's a yeah. reality for everybody. Because, yeah, that's a reality. But I've been doing a little bit of reading. I've been doing a bit of uh, watching. And now that I've done my live chat, I'm doing a little bit of research on my guests. And uh, I've been doing exercising, which I never, I mean, I was not prompt with it, but I've been extremely prompt now because, uh, uh, and I spend a lot of time with my little doggy, Meredith. Uh, you can see her. I hope I can show you. Let me take this to her. Can you see? Not yet. Yes. Yes. Can you, can you see her? Yeah. Can you see her? Yeah, she's sleeping. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's sleeping on my bed. Nicely sleeping. So that was Meredith for you. So she just keeps me entertained. She follows me all around the house. So she keeps me entertained. And uh, that's it. I mean, uh, and then I play uh, Ludo with my sisters in Bangalore. Sorry. One minute, yes. I play Ludo with my sisters in Bangalore. And so we do all these things. And uh, of course, there's a lot of cooking, eating, eating, cooking. Uh, I think we've cooked more di different dishes in the house during COVID than any other time because half the time you're cooking with stuff that is available to you. So you can't eat what it's not available. So experimenting. So it's been good. And I cooked also one. It's not some, I don't think it's a great badge of honor that I cooked, but, uh, but I, I did that as what well. What did you cook? My wife and daughter find it funny and they find What did you I cook? I cooked Thai curry rice. Egg fried rice and Thai curry. I'm sure it must have been very tasty. At least that's I mean, what your wife like and daughter would have told you. No, they actually, they did tell me it was good. So, and they, let me tell you, they're my, they, they are the biggest Most honest critic. Honest critic of everything I do. They, they, they actually inflate my balloon, you know. Every time I'm little, feel little inflated, they, they just come and poke a hole into it. That is what family is for. Yes. So I, I also wanted to, I also wanted to talk to you about your new show because you know uh, it's already created a buzz and uh, the kind of people you are speaking to are very interesting. Tell us a little more about it. Where did the idea come from? I was sitting like this and uh, I, I should actually give credit to uh, my dear friend Anurag Batra. I'm sure. So he called me one day and he said I want to do a I want to do uh, Anurag Bhatra and his colleague, what's his name? Uh, I'm just forgetting now. Oops. Abhinav. You know, this is age catching up with me that I'm Abhinav. forgetting names. Uh, call me up and said, we want, uh, pardon? Abhinav. Abhinav. Actually, Abhinav called me and said, first, yeah, yeah, Abhinav called me and he said, uh, we want to do a call with you. We want to do a Zoom call with you and an interview with you. And then Anurag will be joining as well. So I said, okay. So we did that call. And uh, then I watched the call and I felt good with myself. <laughs> I felt good with myself and then uh, I said why don't I do something why don't I do something and uh, I said maybe first I thought the business world will carry it on its platform or something like that Anurag hasn't made me that offer so then I said okay so I mentioned this to a colleague of mine called uh, Mandy Kulkarni and I said I'm thinking of something like that so what Mandy did was he actually made a poster and sent to me I looked at my own picture and I felt very happy about it. And I looked at the poster and I liked the poster. So I said, okay, let me go ahead and do it. 
And then I spoke to a friend of mine, Jill Majeski, and I told her, this is what I want to do. She said, why don't you do it? If you want to do it, do it. You know, if that's what your heart is telling you want to do it, do it. And this is a good time to do it. So I said, okay. So I said, will you be my first guest? Now she was put on a spot because she's never given an interview. She's never done a show ever in her life. And so she, I mean, she was encouraging me, telling me, do what your heart tells you to do. And then asked her, will you be my first guest? She couldn't say no. So that's how it started. And actually, between the time I decided, it was on a Saturday. By Sunday evening, I had a poster. Tuesday, Monday, I made the announcement. Friday, I was live. Great. But once I went live, I decided, okay, who should I get as my next guest? So I picked up the phone on my friend Anil because, uh, and, you know, I said, he said, when, tell me when, where. I mean, he didn't even think about it in one second, you know. So that happened. So, the, so then, when, then I said, I should have a guest li lineup for at least two weeks. Couple so I, weeks for next, yeah. Not a couple of weeks. I don't want to make it a couple of weeks because what happens is if something uh, topical comes up and if I may want to change, right? So, so every two, I have two weeks lined up. So I've got my next guest. Same thing, Poonam I call her Poonam. I called her Poonam because, again, I wanted people from different walks of life. I did not want only Bollywood or only politics or thing. So my next guest is Poonam. So again, I called her, I sent her a message and she said, sure, tell me when. I said, this is the date, this is the time. Uh, she said, any time for you, Raj. And that, that's it. So, uh, and and now I'm fixing my next guest. Okay. Interesting. I mean, I said, uh, you will get to know every Monday. And that's what I've decided in my head. The, the thought process was Friday will be the show. No matter how much people love you, they will not be able to watch it live. But they've got the weekend to catch up. And Mondays, I will announce my new guest. So they have something to look forward to. Definitely. So Raj, uh, uh, we, before we close it, I also wanted to, uh, I, I would want you to go back to like one year back when you were, the CEO of uh, COO of ICOM. What were the what would have been the first few things you would have done after this lockdown? You know, when you would have gone back to office. Or what do you think anybody who's in that position like right now? Yeah, I mean, what are the what are first of the first few measures that anybody who's in that position, be it ICOM, be it Star, be it any other uh, big broadcasters, should do? I think first and foremost, I'm sure most of them are doing that, but first and foremost, I think uh, communication, clear clarity in communication. You know, if half the things is people assume things and, uh, and in today's day and age, and one of the things, because I'm working with a partner in London and they're doing a lot of work with the corporates there. And he was telling me from some of the key words and some of the things that are coming out are anxiety, uh, is fear, is, uh, you know, not knowing what's going on, uh, people are scared and things like that, right? Uh, also a lot of fatigue because people are overworking. Like I told you, people are overworking because there's no, uh, it was it was a given that your boss won't call you at six o'clock, you leave office, you go home, 99% you don't get calls. But now there's no, there's no, everybody is calling everybody at all the time. So those kind of things. I think clarity in communication. I think first thing any leader should do at this stage is as many times as possible and clarity in communication and constant feedback because you don't know who is going through what, who lives in what circumstances, what are their personal problems. These are the times when I think being empathetic for a leader is the most important thing. You know, you can't assume because you are living in a five-bedroom apartment and you got air condition and you're, you know, you can't assume that the person at the other end is the same. For all you know, that person of yours who's a very excellent employee in office in today's situation, maybe having a small baby at home, he has to manage his wife, he has to manage the baby, they don't have health, they have to, you know, uh, work together. So you have to take into consideration these things. You have to assume that everybody is going through hardships and then work towards it rather than, you know, just I think first is being empathetic. Second is clarity in communication, uh, getting feedback. Feedback is a very important thing. And uh, 
also creating people uh, sort of a uh, people in groups where you have leaders who are there to take care of each other's problems to find out what what are the employees facing is somebody having a problem does somebody need help and i think corporates at this time if you're not there for your people when they need you uh, see so some of the things are going to happen whether you like it or not cost cutting is going to happen uh, things like that but that is reality as long as you're being fair and you're it's fine it's fine but i think compassion and empathy is the most important thing for a leader at this stage but this is more on a personal front what i was trying also trying to understand is uh, for from business perspective what are some of the key measures that uh, leaders should do in the me industry right now i think this is a big learning for corporates i know somebody told me yesterday and this is damn funny uh, covid can be renamed as cto because what ceos never managed to do for organizations this pandemic has done it has made corporates go digital and go digital and how i think one of the things uh, uh, corporates will also do and i was like i said i was speaking to a colleague of mine in uh, london and he told me raj none of my people and they they don't have a very big setup they have a setup of about say 40 or 60 people he said none of my colleagues after this want to come back to work they don't want to come back to work they're saying we want to work from home if the work is getting done why should we come to work now i think that is going to change i think one of the things and i and i heard uday also saying that you know in uh, one of his uh, uh, i watched it on some ch channel i don't know but uh, he was saying that so i think that one of the things that when a person goes back is to see what is important and also prepare for a situation like this for the future so whether digitally whether if you can if you can get things done where people don't have to travel i think as a leader you also have a uh, uh, as an organization and as a leader both you have a you have a responsible responsibility towards society so if you can make sure that your people don't have to travel and if you can get the work done why have cars on the road and people traveling by trains and things like that give them the option to work from home because you've done it now and your work is going on smoothly i assume so people who have to come to work you can't help it but a editing job can be done from anywhere for example i'm just giving in my industry so so i think even if you cut you 30% to, 40% that will be enough i mean of workforce coming to office you know you can do something you can say come three days a week and do it in rotation so that you know so half the population does not so good for the environment of the I mean, environment and so many other things. So many things. Yes. Yeah, so I would think that we have to think for policy where we based on whatever they're doing, they still continue to work that many days a week. But tell them you have to come to office twice a week. You you can you you know that kind of a thing and rotation. So and so that. everybody doesn't come on the same two days of the week so things like that i think people uh, leaders have to be more innovative they have to think differently uh, one of the things that's not happening today is there are no water cooler conversations right in offices so people are feeling lonely so can you do some kind of a thing where people come together on a weekly basis digitally because there's no other option digitally so things like that i think leaders have to be innovative leaders have to think differently and uh, I, i once again say the same thing leaders have to communicate leaders have to get feedback and leaders have to be empathetic this is i think your internet connection is a little slow going your internet is little slow it gets hanged after a few minutes oh, oh i'm so Sometimes. sorry this is this is scary for me especially because if i'm going to do live tomorrow then it's scary slightly that is the so, challenge that's the challenge because we are not we are dependent on somebody for the internet connection <laughs> yeah so before we close raj i want you to say a couple of things about for those people who uh, perhaps started their own businesses much like you but they are not as confident or as experienced or they do not have that experience of taking risk like you have they are younger than you they uh, they've done it for the first time or they've invested too much money what kind of uh, i mean how do you motivate them and what should they do in this situation
Hello. Uh, I would say, I would say uh, it is very scary. You know, I would be lying if I said it's not scary. It's scary even for me, okay? In spite of having a roof over my head and food on the table, it is scary for me. Uh, so I can imagine somebody who's put their life savings and started something or taken debt or borrowed money or things like that. It's very, very scary. But I would say be optimistic because you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice, so be optimistic. Because what you can't change around you, you can't change around you. So be optimistic. You have to be hopeful. But you have to be also very business-like. Uh, you have to cut your losses. If you feel, don't say, I will, if, you're, if you, you can always get another office, I think that you're not able to sustain, shut it down. I mean, shut the overheads down. Wherever you can, you work from home, do things like that. Cash is king. So whatever you can conserve, conserve. I know, and uh, it is better to cut your losses and still be focused in what you're doing. You know, you never give up hope. You, you say, okay, sometimes, you know, I never call anything a failure. People don't fail. People have setbacks. So you need to be able to say, okay, it's a setback. I will take a step back and then I will move forward at the right time. You know, when a tsunami is coming at you, you can't stand there and be brave. You have to just, you know, sidestep and let the tsunami pass and then you walk. You know, so that's the way to look at it. Uh, but be hopeful. You know, the one thing that uh, that keeps us going is hope. Puri uh, Kaina, what what does it say? Umid uh, mein. I, I don't know. I'm very bad with these things, but uh, uh, so so that's it. So so you have to have hope. You have to be positive, uh, and. Uh, Say, say, say to yourself, this too shall pass. You know, say that to yourself. And it will pass. Believe me, it will pass. I'm very confident we will bounce back. And we, when we bounce back, we will bounce back much, much, much higher. Yes, inshallah, we all will bounce back. And uh, on that optimistic note, I have to close this because we are already out of time. And uh, thank you so much, Raj, for speaking to us. This is very inspiring and I'm sure it will inspire those who really need inspiration, who are feeling very anxious in this moment. And uh, we will all bounce back soon. Thank you so much and stay at home, stay safe, take care of your health. Thanks yes. a lot for your time. You too, Nadia. Take care and thank you for having me on this chat. And one of the days you're gonna and one of these days you're gonna come on my Friday's live. Oh <laughs> give me some more years. <laughs> let me be let me reach that level that I come to come on that show. I love no, that. <laughs> no, but what I want to tell my uh, uh, my friends in the industry on this show is this show will also cover people from the industry, just for your information. So Thank because you so much. That, that that's where my bread and butter came from for many many years. So they can and there are and there are many many people in our industry who inspired me. So they will be part of my first time. Thank you, Raj. Raj, you really you need to fix it? your internet connection. It's hanging. Uh, it's hanging every few minutes. It's, it becomes a little slow. Huh? So. But did you get did you get what I said just now? Did you get what I said just now? I, I got it that uh, you you want to invite people from your industry also because you that's where you're getting your bread butter from. Yeah, and there are a lot of people who've inspired me, and I want to in some way or the other get them on my Friday live with Raj Naik. Thank you so much. You've already made my day. You don't know I'm 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 physically sitting there, but I'm on some another level right now. <laughs> Thank you, Raj. Thanks a lot. And it was, it was our pleasure speaking to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.